Good morning. We're going to get back to talking about some plants here. This morning we're going to talk about the sweet birch tree. I first fell in love with the flavor of this tree when I was a kid and I would drink birch beer. And I remember asking my dad, what is this flavor? Why do they call it birch beer? And he said, well, because it comes from the birch tree. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And so whenever I would see a birch tree, I would uh, break a twig and sometimes it would smell like birch beer or uh, something called, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Winto Green Lifesavers. Uh, the Winto Green Lifesaver also has the same flavoring, which traditionally has come from uh, the natural sources. I think at this point it's probably manufactured, but historically one of those sources was the sweet birch tree. Um, now, when I say sweet birch tree, there are a couple of trees actually that produce this flavor. One is called the black birch, one is the yellow birch, and there may be others. But there are other birch trees that don't have any flavor at all, and so you can go around tasting different birch trees or sniffing different birch trees and sometimes finding this and sometimes not. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is due to a chemical. The smell comes from uh, something called oil of wintergreen, which is basically methyl salicylate, which is a, a chemical that's found in the birch tree and in its pure form is not very good for you, but uh, in small doses, perfectly safe and, and it has this wonderful smell, this wonderful flavor. It also has a really interesting property, which I'm going to tell you about. Um, mes Methophilis... <laughs> Ha! Ah, I will get this. Methyl, methyl salicylate is fluorescent. Now the definition of fluorescence is, uh, I didn't actually know this until recently. What fluorescence really is, is it is the transformation of one invisible light form, like shortwave light or other form of radiation actually in some cases, but in this case shortwave light into visible light, you know, light that our eyes can see. So shortwave light you can't see. So when that occurs, it just dissipate, generally dissipates and, uh, you know, you, you would never even notice it. However, methyl salicylate has this interesting property where it will turn shortwave light into uh, light that your eye can see. It's in, in like little blue, um, bursts of color. So if you've ever eaten a winter green lifesaver and chewed it in the dark in front of a mirror, I know probably you think that's kind of weird, but if you try it, you will see little uh, blue bursts of light. So what happens is when any sugar candy comes, well, when you're chewing it, and the sugar comes in contact with the nitrogen in the air, that produces a chemical reaction. So this is happening every time you're eating a hard piece of candy and you crunch on it, you are creating a short wave light in your mouth. In general, that's just going to dissipate. However, with methyl salicylate in the, the candy, that will turn that short wave light into light that you can see. So it's kind of a cool little factoid about uh, methyl salicylate. And you can make your own methyl salicylate. You can grow it in your backyard if you were growing uh, sweet birch. So fast forward from my childhood, learning, uh, I, I, learning about lifesavers, actually. I did learn about that when I was a kid. I didn't learn about the chemical reasons behind it. Uh, fast forward, probably looking about 30 years, and I'm sitting in the living room of my friend, and he is... He's got a, a kettle of chaga going on the wood stove. And chaga is a, is a fungus that grows on birch trees and other trees. And it uh, can be basically boiled into a tea, which has medicinal properties. So he's making this on the stove and I asked him what it tasted like and he poured me a cup of it. 
and I smelled it and it smelled just like this flavor that I remembered from my childhood. I was like, wow, this is awesome. And I remembered, of course, you know, birch beer comes from birch trees. I didn't, I hadn't really made the connection with the uh, winter green lifesavers. Uh, it's also, oddly enough, the smell in Bengay when you put that on your uh, uh, on your aching muscles, methyl salicylate can help to uh, to ease the pain of muscle muscle stress, and so they put it in Bengay. Don't eat Bengay, even if you're tempted. Uh, anyway, so I am uh, sitting in his living room drinking this and thinking, "Wow, this is awesome! I need to get more of this." So what do I do? I go and I order chaga and boil some up for myself, and lo and behold, it doesn't taste anything like the flavor that he had in his chaga. Well, it turns out that chaga can come from various birch trees. Some of them produce methyl salicylate, <clears throat> some of them don't. And it's difficult to get chaga from the black birch and yellow birch. I mean, sometimes you just get lucky. And so if you want it, try and request it from you know whoever supplies your chaga. Some of them will perhaps help you out with that. The ones that I've approached have not. So, so what do I do? I decide I'm gonna take matters into my own hands. I need this flavor and does it really matter if it comes in the chaga or, or from some other source? Maybe it doesn't matter. So I planted a black, a three, small black birch trees just clumped together in my backyard. And in the last year, they've started to be producing enough twigs so that now I can go out and clip those twigs. When I'm making chaga, I just toss a few of these uh, black birch twigs into my chaga and voila, I have a winto green chaga that is to my mind, the very best, the only way of drinking chaga is with the flavor of methyl salicylate. And the only way to get that is either forage it or grow it in your backyard. So, so I'm growing it and I am really happy that I have a, an, a handy source of that whenever I want it. Now, you wanna cut the twigs. If you do grow this, you wanna cut the twigs in the fall or winter. Um, it's Otherwise, in the spring, you get too much sap flowing through them, you can do damage to the tree. So it's a good idea to cut them before that starts happening. That starts happening in the late winter, so you really don't, you know, don't want to go too far into the winter cutting your, your twigs. Um, this can be maintained. This tree is... Most birch trees don't live very long. However, that is not true about the black birch. The black birch can live for 250 years it, it might even be able to live longer than that, but you probably won't have to worry about that. It lives uh, longer, and most trees will live longer if it's kept coppiced. So you let it grow for several years, and then you cut it back to the ground, and then you let it grow again. And that tends to renew certain kinds of trees. Some don't work this way, but Chaga does. Uh, I'm but I'm getting a little distracted here, but, uh, but black birch does, and that way you can keep a supply of twigs by, and this is why I have three of them, so I'm letting each one in turn get taller, and then I cut it back to the ground, and the goal is to create sort of this bushy structure, which will have lots and lots of twigs on it, and so when I harvest, I'll have tons of these these twigs to use for flavorings. And mostly I probably just use it for chaga. Sometimes I just drink it just as a tea on its own. It can also be in addition to uh, mint teas and other teas that you want to get that same flavor in. So that's the story with the, the black birch. Very easy to grow, doesn't take up much space. You can grow it as a small, it'll start as a scraggly tree, but as you cut it back, it will bush out more. And eventually you can cut it, you can grow it as a, as a small bush, which will be a, a yearly source of tea flavoring for you. Um, and I would, if you like that flavor, I would, 
And I hope I haven't grossed you out with the whole Ben, ben Gay story, but uh, if you like that flavor, I would encourage you to put this in a small spot of your yard. It is uh, somewhat shade tolerant because quite often these trees start in the in the understory and have to reach up through the, the forest uh, canopy eventually. So you can grow it with some shade. I wouldn't grow it in, in complete shade or you won't get as much uh, activity out of it, but you can grow it in some shade and, uh, and it will be a handy addition to your forest garden. Uh, you could surround it with mint if you wanted to and have just a whole little mint uh, guild that uh, you, you know, use to, uh, to create your mint flavors. And I imagine the two would go grow pretty well together. I haven't, haven't tried that myself, but my mint is creeping in that direction. So we may get some, uh, uh, some of that action kind of soon. Thank you so much for joining me uh, today. I hope you learned something from this. I just love this plant, but I suppose I say that a lot. Uh, it's just such a neat addition to my food forest and something that I hope that you will experiment with. I hope you will drop me a thumbs up. I hope you will uh, subscribe to this channel because I could use a few more subscribers right now. And I hope you will take a look at the foodforestgardenclub.org website where we are getting together on Zoom, in person, and swapping stuff and getting getting involved with uh, our online community of gardeners. We have forums, there are these videos up there, and you will also find ways to you know, follow other gardeners who are in this, uh, on this website and who are doing really interesting things. And you can ask them questions and you know, ho hopefully uh, get to talk with them you know, online or in person. So we're, uh, we're working on building this community and would really love to see you there. In the meantime, uh, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, video segment and I hope you have a really nice day.